So first things first, let's get this little clip off here so we can get our uh, stop switch lead leads free. Now, if you wanted to reuse that, you just hammer it back to normal and throw it in there. All right, the fun part now is these clips. They're not impossible. They just ain't that fun. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This one's a little loose. We have one broken right there, but that one's intact. And there's one on each bottom. So what I'm going to do is go in here with a screwdriver and push in each leg as I push it back in with my finger. That usually will do it. The bottom ones are a little harder to get to. Another option is just put a socket on it, or you could probably just pry it. Let's try the pry it method since we already got one broken. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that. Yeah, that was easier than pushing in the clips. Now let's do that. See what I mean about the broken one? And that one's missing the clip. Now you could force this broken one out of here. Take the clip off, put it on another tab, and be fine. As you can see, it was holding on there just fine before. That being broken is not, not really the end of the world. So this one can't really do that pry method with because this tab's a little messed up. But I'll do my push it in method. That one's giving me problems. Those clips kind of on the rusted side, not really coming out. Alright, top two are free. Bottom one came right off. I just did the second. And the top one's still giving me problems. Perfect. So we have one broken tab. One needs the spring replaced. Let's go ahead and push that on there right now, actually. And that's our front panel and our stop switch. Now, you can't just take the nut off the stop switch because these don't fit through it. I have a video on... Um, what's it called? Um, Evinrude Electrical Connectors Explained. At the end of that video I show you how to get these connector bodies off so it'll fit through that nut. So if you're wondering how to do that, give that video a watch. Takes too long to show you. And no reason to since I already have a video for it. Let's go ahead and watch that. Well, that's it for the most part of this thing. Got to get that shift rod and hardware off of there, and then we'll start ripping the uh, power head apart. All right, tiller handler on these things is a little funky compared to a lot of the older motors of this vintage. Um, the 9.5 tillers only work on the 9.5s. So I already pulled the bolts out of this linkage out of here to pull off the uh, ignition plate. So most of the work's already done. So I'm just going to turn the tiller handle, get that little cam set up out of there. But that's the th what the throttle linkage looks like. Set that off to the side. Now we get some screws here. Let's pull those out. I believe those are half inch or seven sixteenths. Half inch. Which means I got to find my half inch socket. All right, check. Now 
like to loosen all bolts. Then go in for the kill. By kill, I mean a uh, full reveal. So long those guys are. It's a weird design. Some people like these motors, some people don't. I don't mind them. No. I like Kevin Reeds in general, so it's not saying much. As you can see, I always do things correctly. Zed stop, no big deal. We'll slide the tiller handle out a little bit and get to the rest. So that one down below is a 7 sixteenths. You think the uh, smaller bolt would be where the space is limited, like right there, but uh, who knows, whatever. See what happened there. This bolt's pretty gummed up. There's a little one. And our next long one. So as you can see, once that linkage is out of there, three bolts and the whole tiller handle comes out. Let's back up here and show what we got left and what our tiller handle looks like removed. Apparently I still need more room, this thing is so big. Let me drop my tools and there is our tiller handle. Fuel line is built in there. I always thought that was a little weird. All right, let's do that front panel next. So first things first, let's get this little clip off here so we can get our uh, stop switch lead leads free. Now if you wanted to reuse that, you just hammer it back to normal and throw it in there. Alright, the fun part now is these clips. They're not impossible. They just ain't that fun. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This one's a little loose. We have one broken right there, but that one's intact. And there's one on each bottom. So what I'm going to do is go in here with a screwdriver and push in each leg as I push it back in with my finger. That usually will do it. The bottom ones are a little harder to get to. Another option just put a socket on it, or you could probably just pry it. Let's try the pry it method since we already got one broken. Ah, yeah, perfect. Look at that. Yeah, that was easier than pushing in the clips. Now let's do that. See what I mean about the broken one? And that one's missing the clip. Now you could force this broken one out of here. Take the clip off, put it on another tab, and it'll be fine. As you can see, it was holding on there just fine before. That being broken is not, a, not really the end of the world. So this one can't really do that pry method with because this tab's a little messed up. But I'll do my push it in method. That one's giving me problems. 
Those clips kind of on the rusted side, not really coming out. All right, top two are free. Bottom one came right off. I just did the second. And the top one's still giving me problems. Perfect. So we have one broken tab. One needs the spring replaced. Let's go ahead and push that on there right now, actually. And that's our front panel and our stop switch. Now, you can't just take the nut off the stop switch because these don't fit through it. I have a video on, um, what's it called? Um, Evinrud Electrical Connectors Explained. At the end of that video, I show you how to get these connector bodies off so it'll fit through that nut. So if you're wondering how to do that, give that video a watch. Takes too long to show you, and no reason to since I already have a video for it. Let's go ahead and watch that. Well, that's it for the most part of this thing. Just got to get that shift rod and hardware off of there, and then we'll start ripping the uh, power head apart. Now, to get the power head off, we have to take these two halves apart take these two halves apart, one of the steps we need to do is get the shift handle out of here. Reason being, kind of runs through both. Uh, that little cable right there, that controls the reverse lock slash tilt lock. And then this rod right here, like you can see it on that angle, there we go. That controls the shifting in and out of gear. So we need to get this apart to get that shift handle out. So, got a 3 8 socket on this thing. That should be the only pin holding that in. Let me uh, back up and show you what I did. So as you saw, I got the nut out, pin, whatever you want to call it, that long thing. And all I did was shifting it up and down while pulling that way. And it comes out. Not too bad. There's some bushings and things inside of there you should probably take out so they don't get lost or broken, which is a more likely scenario since they'll... Uh, Roll off, you know, won't notice them until you step on them. They're, uh, they're both the same. It doesn't really matter how you put them on, but anyhow. So our shift rod connector is apart. Hopefully this uh, works out okay. Well, anyway, now we gotta take apart the uh, two halves, and for that I gotta clean off my bench, which I'll show you what it looks like now. A bit of stuff. So I'll clean that, and we'll uh, get the power head off. So I'm gonna test this stop switch real quick. Sorry for the angle. I can't get the phone any higher right now, just because it's attached to a dolly. I don't really feel like picking up a dolly. So here's my multimeter. This is a uh, can tech, whatever that is. Um, I have it set on the uh, little sound diode symbol. So what happens when you touch them together? Beeps. And activity happens. So all I do, insert in like so. So in theory, I hit that button, these contact, multimeter beeps. Nothing. So that tells me right off the bat, the stop switch is bad. I'll uh, go ahead and remove it from those front panels. Um, I'll take it apart, make another video on how to possibly fix that. Anyway, so stay tuned for that video.